Woman participation in politics is still pretty much low in Nigeria. 13% um, of candidates, um, female candidates in 2019 election, 7 out of 108 senators, 22 out of 360 members of the House of Reps. And this is at a time where countries like Rwanda and South Africa are doing a lot more. I mean, uh, in Rwanda, we are told that over 50% uh, female representation in government leadership in that part of of the country of course by the way the vice president in liberia is also a woman the big question is that what more can the woman do and what doors of opportunities are open to them ahead of the general election in 2023 i'm joined this morning by the national commissioner federal character commission representing enugu state honorable guinea kato good morning honorable thank you for finding time to join us Honorable, can you hear me? Not hearing anything. Okay, we're having issues with that um, particular connection. We'll fix it in a short while so we can get back to this conversation. Um, in some other parts of Africa, we're told that there is some sort of a quota system um, that ensures that more women participate in politics. The affirmative action um, is 35% and Nigeria is still very much struggling to achieve that. Uh, however, seeing women in positions of power, we are told can, in a way, encourage others to confidently aspire to leadership position. I spoke with the APC woman leader uh, sometime last weekend. She's optimistic that 2023 is going to be different. According to her, they are seeking more than 100 seats uh, for female representation come the general election in 2023. How, how feasible and how achievable that is, we might have to wait and watch how it plays out. We also saw in a few days ago, the Progressive Women Conference and gathering thousands of uh, women leaders across Nigeria to discuss their expectations uh, from the party ahead of the big one in 2023. Let's get back to Abuja and see if um, Honorable Ginika Tolkan here. Be. Good morning, Honorable. Completely gone. All right, we're having issues with that connection. I'm hoping that we can fix it in time so that we can uh, um, take this conversation to uh, some other parts of the country where hopes are really high as we get um, what political parties have in store for women who have played a critical role in mobilization, especially at pre-election years like this. Um, a few points to note, for instance, would be the importance of um, getting more women involved, particularly in intra-party system. Uh, uh, um, National Convention for the APC is, has now been scheduled for February. We saw the PDP having its own earlier on. And a lot of questions are asked about um, what is the strategy, the political strategy, for these parties to have more women on board. And what exactly also will be the benefit of that for the Nigerian polity? We've been told on this platform how beneficiary, I mean, how beneficial it is for a nation to have more women participate in its leadership. Uh, many people have asked the question of whether Nigeria is ready to see female governors, for instance, a higher number of members in the House of Representatives or even a female president. Uh, how, how far <laughs> and how soon are we? Now, as regards to that particular reality, it's a really big question that must be answered. But, however, a more practical question to ask is what is the strategy to make this happen? We've seen a lot of aspirants come out in the past days, you know, declaring their intention and their ambition to run. And you want to put that on the scale. You want to find out how many of them, you know, are women and should women wait to be handed these opportunities or they should actually go ahead to grab it. Um, other parts of the country have seen a situation where equality has 
skyrocketed unfortunately in this part we're still dealing with some cultural limitations uh, particularly when you look at how the women and girls are affected by insecurity in northern nigeria um, the post-covid experience is also an eye-opener the fact that many young girls did not return to school after that particular break what is the country doing especially in this part of the world to ensure that we do not fall back uh, at some point we're battling with having the highest number of out of school children in the world and all of this reality is also not making that number any better it comes to mind you know another question that also comes to mind is how supportive women have been of their women counterparts in ensuring that more of them are encouraged you know to do more in the political arena let's get back to abuja and find out if my guest can hear me now good morning honorable can you hear me good morning good morning finally you are here oh that's so relieving i mean i, I just kept talking and talking to <laughs> to ensure that your voice is back mm -hmm. all right so i'd like to begin with um something that would be a bit more comfortable with you uh being the uh, national commissioner for uh the federal character commission uh, sometime last year, the Speaker of the House of Reps was quoted to have said that um, as we stand now, the nation's, the federal character is at variance with the nation's realities. According to him, it limits national opportunities to only geographical location without consideration for gender, persons living with disabilities, and age classification. Let's begin by taking your reaction on that. Well, it's getting interested this morning, but we'll fix it. Earlier on, I told you about my surprise guest and that the conversation on this show is about to get deeper and even more engaging. Um, um, it, it's been a fantastic time hosting the show for the past one month, but I need to introduce the coach by the sideline who, you know, who's been speaking into my head. So, ladies and gentlemen, Yuri Folari is back the veteran <laughs> broadcast journalist <laughs> that's a surprise indeed <laughs> me. um well, well good morning i say my good morning i also say compliments of the season um because that is the sign so compliments to you you've been doing a fantastic job how has you it know, been i've been watching mm. you know from home uh it's you know it's, it's gotten busy mm. um while we're waiting to get the gremlins out of the uh, out of the machine yeah. uh i was just noting um what um the national leader of APC, Ashajibola mm. he's he's really jump started the process, right? Kick started the process I mean. by throwing his hat in the ring and saying that this is the way it is. And he's been all over the place uh consulting. Yeah, you know? it, it got the year very busy earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, indeed. I have to admit to you, I didn't see that coming. I thought that, <laughs> oh, Ashwajo was going to wait, you know, for the national convention. But then he visited Mr. President. And the moment that interview went viral, mm -hmm. I mean, it changed the whole scope of conversation. You're telling me, you're telling me. And uh, we've seen a lot of consultation, you know, across board. I think that it has made conversations about the general election you know, very, very active, Indeed. even earlier on into the year. Uh, and you know, this yeah. is going to be too pronged. Uh, in, in the case of, uh, I mentioned, uh, uh, yes. um, he's going to have to face the primaries, mm. and um, Democrat that he is, um, he will not be surprised if uh, anybody else from his party also expresses that interest. At least that's what we're hearing, that's what the spin doctors are saying from behind the scenes, mm. that, you know, of course, uh, as, as many as, as want to come, no Democrats can feel threatened by that. I so think that is going to be very interesting. It, I, I, I agree <laughs> with you. We're going to have yes. to watch and see and how, see how, how this it goes. plays out. I think that um, history is yet again about to be written. <laughs> we saw what happened with the APC in 2015 thereabout. I mm. mean, it, it was an impossible task to bring all those different parties together and um, also challenge an incumbent government that has Indeed. been you know, around for quite a number number of years so it's about time again where we watch how things and develop. then it happened the important yes. thing is that mm. what you said it looked like a far shot yes uh, but then it all went and happened Absolutely. And, um, yeah, here we are although a lot more has happened since then mm. uh, again it's another chapter we'll see how it goes <laughs> <laughs> absolutely we will and most importantly is also the need to you know begin to educate nigerians to get involved in the process because usually they will tell you that you know the middle class don't 
get mixed up with politics. They don't even go out to vote. They just believe that, um, you know, after all, I provide my own electricity, I dig my own borehole. Who cares after all? I think that beyond, you know, the consultation and the things we're seeing, political parties also now have to take the responsibility of keeping engaging and educating the people on the importance of going out to vote and doing exactly what is expected of them as a patriotic Nigerian. Indeed. And, um, well, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, what you just said, it sort of touches on... Uh, uh, the uh, demographics, mm. um, by which I mean that um, young people especially, they're so valuable and um, this is a valuable resource, but unfortunately they might not be interested or as interested as they can be. Mm. So as you said, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Uh, the elders in the party, they need to... People have to move from Twitter to start you know, engaging in politics. Well... Because elections are not going to be won on social media. Indeed. Mm. But it's an invaluable tool, nevertheless. Mm. Uh, you probably agree. That's right. Because that's where the youth are. That's, that's where you can reach them. But can you now, apart from reaching them, can you persuade them mm. to do what you are saying, which is elections are not, going to be won, are not going to be won on social media. Can we organize, you know, um, you, you know, I don't even know how, how it's going anymore because um, uh, by, by that I mean that, you know, we got used to working from home. Yeah. Uh, now, maybe following the lead of the UK, mm. uh, the PM over there has mm. said that that won't be required anymore. Mm. Uh, even masks won't be inquired, uh, required in schools anymore. Mm. So things are changing, but I don't know the extent to which they're changing. But you make a very, very important point. Mm. There are a lot of use on social media, but beyond social media, where it's going to have an effect. Beyond... Uh, you have to, you know, walk the talk. Honorable Genika Tor is standing by in Abuja. Okay. And I hope that she can hear us now. Very quickly, talk to us about the challenges that women are facing, particularly in their participation in politics, as we count down to the big one in 2023. It's gone again, but it's okay. <laughs> oh, my. I, I, Today's I one of those that, kinds yes. of days. It, it just... Well, um... Well... Of course, you know, um, women are facing a lot of challenges. And that is why um, I'm able woman leader, the Honorable Sela Okotete, came up with this great initiative to organize the first ever progressive national conference for the women. And of course, I just heard recently, and it was a huge success. And this is because we are looking towards 2023 to have more women inclusion in both elective and appointive positions. Mm. So the challenges that we're facing uh, is that that we know that we're going to, of course, take care of this time around. So women coming together with one voice, speaking with one heart, and, you know, of course, we'll get there. It's been many years of you talks. Are, about um, uh, um, getting more women involved. Talk to us about the strategies you intend to, you know, use this time, particularly within your party, to get more women, you know, the leadership positions. Wow. Like I said, um, our, woman, our woman rep, Honorable Stella Okotete, has already set the pace. First of all, she started with the mentoring program. And then, coming up with this initiative, where all women come together with one voice. She also has put together what we call the Progressive Young Women Forum. Catching them young, making sure that we go to the grassroots, take these girls when they're still just coming up, you know, mentor them, and then let them understand that this is time for us to do it. Also, we... We, 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 we starting this early. You could see the just concluded um, conference, how huge it was, how massive attended and all of that. And then women coming together in that number, of course we'll get there. So um, we also have put some strategies where all the, the, the leaders, those that are already appointed, those, those that are already in um, elected positions, she has put us together in one forum to begin to reach out to other people and ensure that we bring them together, 
make them have a sense of belonging. You know, when you talk to people about coming into politics and putting in their own contributions, they tell you something. They say, no, it's not a place for women. They get scared. But recently, with what has been going on, with the strategies put together, they are beginning to understand that women have a place, yeah. you know, in politics. And with that, I think we're going to get somewhere. So your party is... We just conclu concluded the uh, conference. Go ahead, please. Go ahead. You know, we... Okay, they, they just concluded the conference. At the beginning point, it looked like, oh, it was not going to, you know, happen. So many challenges, funding, and all that. But you know, of course, in my committee, the Contact and Mobilization Committee, I was also given a wonderful chairman, um, Honorable Iman Ibrahim Suleiman. And together we put in this force, you know, looking at the intentions of, of, the, of, of the convener, Honorable Stella Okotete. And every woman felt excited. You could see the filter going from one state to the other, all the platforms and all of that. And with what I see for me, I think 2023 is a time for women. We are not going to force it. We are going to push it. We are not going to fight. But we know it is our right, and we will get this, and we must get it. Come 2023. I like your optimism. Honorable Genica Tor is also the Secretary of Contact and Mobilization Committee of the APC National Women Conference. We'll continue this conversation um, next week, hopefully. We're so, so sorry how technology messed it up. But thank you so much for coming and sharing your thoughts with us. Ankyori is back. I've had, a I've had a lot of calls about, I mean, when are you coming back? When are you coming back? The veteran is back and the I'm, show is going to I'm become back, bigger and better and from on next Monday. week. Yes. And uh, I like what the Honorable just said. Mm. 2023 is the time for women. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Mm. We need a lot more women in our polity, you know. Uh, there are those that are in there, but a lot, lot more, That's especially right. younger women, mm. you know, with progressive ideas. And I think that um, the signs are very, very big, especially seeing what younger women, there's a young woman who wants to run for presidency as well. Oh, you know, yeah. Who, yeah. Who has shown an interest. So mm -hmm. uh, the more the merrier. I think, um, mm. yeah, well, mm. yeah, at least she has to get her party. I think that's uh, the daughter of um, um, uh, 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 Chief Femi Okuno. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Mm. Uh, we have to go now. And um, that's our show today. Thank you for being a part of it. Uncle Yeru will be back from Monday with another exciting one. I am Nifemi Ogunto. Thank you for your time.